today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft Copilot. So to start, we're gonna go through the process of when you put the prompt into Microsoft Copilot, what happens behind the scenes that actually generates this response to your prompt. And the neat thing is that what happens behind the scenes here is pretty similar to basically how every large language model AI works, right? In this case, you could be working with Microsoft Copilot with your personal account. You could be using it through your business account, whichever, it doesn't really matter. They're very similar in how they function in the back end. We'll get into the nuances a little bit later. So to start, we have the actual Copilot app open, right? We ask a question of this thing, okay? What this does is this gets fed directly into the Copilot app. And this is very, this all happens very quickly, obviously. So you open Copilot, you enter your question or your statement or your command. And what this does is it goes through this process of what's called grounding. Now, grounding essentially takes the words that you have provided them, and it starts the process of actually getting a response that's relevant instead of just spitting out a bunch of nonsense to you. So it takes the thing, tries to create context, moves it on to what the resources it has available to it, right? In this case, it has things like Bing or any kind of plugins you have attached to this, and that just means online resources, essentially. It's using that as its tools to respond to you, right? And if you're using things that are in the enterprise level, this actually continues on down uh, to what's called Microsoft Graph, which also can reference things like the Power Platform and the Dataverse and just all of the Microsoft 365 tenant suite of tools. Okay, and if that's not relevant, that's fine too. Uh, but essentially, like, if you're a business, you get a lot more out of this thing. Um, and then it'll go back around, okay? Then it goes on to step number three, which is where it sends a modified prompt to its actual large language model. Large language model, we'll get to it in a second, but that's the real guts of this thing. This is the magic. This is where the magic really happens, okay? So it hits the large language model. It's doing its magic right there. It then sends back a response based on all of this other input that it's received just now, right? So after the response has been generated, if it's a business, again, it'll go back and try to figure out compliance and all that good stuff like that to make sure it's not like trying to share information it shouldn't. Uh, and then there's your response. That's how that kind of works in the back end. So that's kind of the overall process there. So you get your prompt, it goes through the process to make sure it's not giving you nonsense. It takes advantage of its resources available to it, whether that be um, online resources or your own business's content that it can build off of. And then it moves on to the large language model, generates a response, spits it back out, and there's your response. Now again, this is like lightning fast, it's pretty wild. So that's kind of how that backend stuff works, right? So what exactly is a large language? We see these things all over the place, man. The, the large language model, the LLMs. So I'll try to keep this kind of simple, okay? So I like to think of them like a person, okay? So yeah, there's your person. There's your large language model, okay? Essentially, you've taught it to listen, okay, to what somebody's telling it. It's able to understand context of what is being told, and it's able to refer to all the knowledge that you've shared with it to generate a acceptable, an acceptable response to that to help com you know, maintain the conversation and also to provide the content or information or answers that people are looking for. That's kind of the idea of, the, of what a large language model is, right? I get asked this a lot, like, what are, what is AI? That's always a fun, it's always a fun question to get, particularly whenever you try to avoid getting into the weeds of how these things work. But in this case, we'll try to keep, again, we'll try to keep this simple. I'll provide a link in the, uh, in the short description with additional information about this if you wanna read on about it. But high level information about how these things are trained and actually built uh, include things like what's called pre-training, okay? This is essentially where you feed that person just a bunch of information and just like, here's my no context, just here's a bunch of information that we found online and in books and all stuff like that, okay? So that's called pre-training, okay? So that's, <laughs> that's the initial phase of building these large language models. And up next is where you get the instruction fine tuning. So what this is, is where after the, all that information, we have dessert, okay? So, so in this case, we have dessert. So in this case, we actually feed it a whole bunch of really valuable conversations, like questions and answers question. This way it can kind of get an idea of like, oh, so that's how you respond to a question like that. And we're feeding it all kinds of information like that. It's a lot less than what the initial pre-training process is, but it's still a large amount of information. And this is what's really helpful for it to be able to understand how to give valuable feedback or answer questions in the ways that you're expecting it to. And the next step in that whole process is called reinforcement learning from human feedback. And it's in the name. So just like we tell kids or our friends, like, and you don't say that, like, like try saying it this way instead. That might be better. So that's kind of what that process looks like towards the end. That's that, that's really, really nailed down the final piece of that whole process. So that's how these things are kind of trained from the very beginning to where they're actually pushed live. So something to be aware of, okay? Large language models, AI, chatbots, whatever, could be chat, GPT, cobot, doesn't matter. They could hallucinate. It's kind of an amusing way to put it. Essentially what it means is it can generate incorrect 
or misleading, or you know, it can simply make up information to complete any task it's been given. So that said, the grounding process early on in those back and forth with the AI is supposed to help mitigate that issue, but it is still a phenomenon that you should be aware of. So that's why you'll often see the disclaimer on any of these chatbots that you work with that the information may not be correct. So that's definitely something to keep in mind whenever you have ChatGPT or Copilot generating or writing anything that has your name attached to it. So another piece of this, it's kind of a bonus piece, is if you haven't already, there is a, a Copilot app available to you on your phone. I believe Android has their own Gemini thing built, built in, um, but Copilot is an app that you have available to you. I have an iPhone, so I have the Copilot iPhone app. Uh, it's pretty handy. It's got the typical, you know, texting back and forth, having those responses go back and forth. Um, but the other cool thing about it is it has the ability to tap this microphone icon and essentially talk to it like you're on the phone with somebody. Now, <laughs> it's a little weird in the beginning, but so for example, here's a practical application. So let's just say I'm driving and I have this, I'm, I'm mulling stuff over because, you know, I'm always thinking about stuff. And so the person that I need to talk to is actually not available at the time. And I'll just be like, hey, I'll pop up on Copilot and I'll have a chat as if I'm on the phone with somebody and it can kind of help me work through some of these roadblocks that I have in my mind. Another neat thing about that though, is as you're having the conversation, it does keep logs of those conversations. So as you're talking to this thing, you're like, ooh, that's a good point. I should think about that later. Now, let's just say you are done with the car, you park, you go in the office, you go to your house, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can pull up your laptop and open up your Copilot and that conversation, and it'll be logged right there for you to reference. So super handy. I like it a lot, but by all means, check it out. All right, the last piece here, Copilot agents, okay? So that's just a little bit of a tweak to this whole thing, right? So. Copilot agents function much the same way as the regular Copilot for your personal account work, right? The real pieces that make it shine though is when it references information that's like on your SharePoint page or OneDrive or your Dataverse from your Dynamics instance or even better, your Power Automate platform. So Copilot agents are really cool because you can have agents in place that help augment customer service people. You can have them help with HR. You can have them help with sales. You can have them help with all pieces of your organization. It's kind of like having employees or coworkers that are there 24 seven. They don't complain. They are always around. They, they know what they're talking about because everything that you're feeding them is up to date, assuming it's up to date. So what they do is that you actually feed that information to them. You set up all the automations that it has access to take advantage of, and then you set them loose to the team. So let's just say I'm a new hire. I'm awkward. I already had my training. I forgot something they told me about. I feel embarrassed. I have an agent to talk to. So I can just type up like, hey, agent, man, I totally forgot. How do we get this new customer signed up? And it can be like, hey, here's our process for signing up a new customer. And here's the form you can use. That's something that you don't have to bother anybody. This is kind of like a weird case, but <laughs> it frees up your people. That way you don't have like somebody in the back end who's like reading an email from one of the employees or taking a phone call and they're like, oh man, I'm not sure. Actually, let me pull it up too. So then you're wasting everybody's time for that stuff. Whereas in this case, we have an agent who's there 24 seven with the resources that your team needs. Now, on top to build on top of that, you can also have things like, you know, we'll just go with the new hire still. This is great. I love the job, but I'd like to do more training and things like that. How do I go about doing that? And it can pull up, here's the trainings that you have available to you. Do any of these, you know, pique your interest? And the person will be like, ooh, yeah, number five, I wanna do that one. And it could be like, great, here's the form, fill it out, we'll sign you up, it'll be there next week. So how that works is that you have, <laughs> so if you care about the details, how that works, so how that works is with the agent being built, if you care about this information, is you have the knowledge base for all the policies that you have in place. You also have the list of all the trainings that you have in place. You then have a form or some sort of process that your person's supposed to follow uh, in, term, in, in order to sign up for that. And as a person is saying like, yeah, man, number five, I like that one. And it can, it'll make that connection with that training. And now in the back end again, you have this calendar in place or this booking calendar where there's slots available basically and they can figure out that this is a good slot for this person to go to so copilot agents super cool man they run they they fit pretty seamlessly on there and it's kind of one of those things where copilot complements every platform that microsoft offers so so i know that was a lot of information i hope this was helpful actually since we're discussing ai and things like that <laughs> i got this camera okay and it's it's AI power is what it markets itself as. And so it I don't know if you noticed, it's been following me around the room, which is kind of amusing. And what's even funnier is I'll be on like teams with somebody talking to somebody on a video call and I won't think about it. I'll just be kind of like, look, and I get the camera like this. And I'll like put my thing, cause it, it uses AI to distinguish hand gestures. So if I hand pull my hand up and then I move, it won't follow me anymore. And if I put it up again, 
it'll follow me, right? So <laughs> there's other little things like that where, so for example, if I pull my fingers up and in like an L shape, it'll zoom in. So what's funny is I'll actually trigger that by accident half the time. So for example, I'll just be like, and, <laughs> and I won't notice it until like halfway through the call. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's super uncomfortable. Let's zoom back out. <laughs> that's a total aside. I don't know if that's even relevant. I might not even put the video, but anyway, I always think that's funny. I think that's pretty funny, particularly because you can time it perfectly where you're just kind of like, oh, really? <laughs> just like... So at any rate, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, so thanks for checking this out. Um, if this sparks some ideas between you or your team, uh, by all means, get in touch. Let's talk. All right. Hey, have a good one. Bye.